In this video, I will introduce measurement theory. First, we will examine what measurement means. We will then consider psychological constructs, some of the problems in measurement, and begin to consider elements of testing. When we consider measurement, more especially in the real world, it is often taken for granted, whether it be a ruler to measure height or a scale to measure weight. In psychological and educational testing, we often need to consider in test theory how we will measure things. In order to measure, we must assign numbers to some property or element of a person, an object, a thing, or an event according to some sort of systematic rule. Educational and psychological measurement, we are often dealing with unobservable phenomena, things that can't be seen or touched or felt. For example, when we consider IQ or mathematical ability, this is what we'll call a latent trait or a construct. You can also consider the simple picture of a face on the screen. We can see the eyes, the brow, and the smile. We might want to begin to construct an idea of what that face meaning implies. For example, could these be elements of something like happiness? An un sort of seen construct that we can create through observable phenomena. We can think of a construct as the very basic building blocks of our theory. We invent constructs. We create them. So we need to be able to measure our invention. We do this. We develop a definition that is measurable. Effectively then, we can create a test to obtain behaviors or some sample performance from our definition. How we measure a theoretical construct starts with our classification and labeling similar behaviors. So we observe behaviors over time, we see the phenomenon or observation in a person, and we begin to build an idea about what this behavior represents. We invent and label a construct. We create operational definitions. These are measurable. We have rules between the construct, the idea, the concept, and what observations we observe, what behaviors we observe. Next, in order to measure, we develop an instrument or a test to measure. You can think of a psychological test, some scale for depression or happiness. Or you can think of an educational test, maybe even a traditional quiz or some form of standardized testing. Then we're going to take our rule where you need to assign numbers. So we have quantitative values assigned based on some rule or systematic process. And from the observations, we're going to infer something about our theory. So for this example, we might think that the larger the smile, the more of an increase in happiness. And we would certainly go through and define, operationally define, and measure things like smiles or raises of the brow. There are several challenges that are going to arise when we're dealing with constructs and test development, one of which several of which that your book discusses, that is the Cracker and Algina text, uh, start to discuss 
is that of abstraction. So we never directly are measuring anything. So as we always indirectly measure, there's going to be several challenges that arise. And here are five of those that they address, which I think maybe are even more meaningful today than when they were originally written. There's no universal approach to measurement. There's no universal way of saying a construct or, or defining it operationally, although there may be uh, standards in the field. And also the method and theory that's involved in measurement will impact our results. Samples are limited in the real world, so often we have issues that could cause dependency. We'll, we'll talk more about this in classical test theory, um, that items and samples are interdependent. We'll talk a little bit about the freeing of this process in item response theory. But just like with any sort of research that one might do, we are simply bounded by a limited sample um, sampling of behaviors. Error will occur, and where we attribute that error can be very important. Uh, maybe in some of your previous statistics courses, we've talked about uh, systematic and random errors. We will have measurement error, where we have to consider things about the way simply that we measure and the tools that we use may have some inherent error in it. We also will have issues arise, like in a test, someone can guess. Or make a mistake that's just simply careless. What about by accident? Something's been misscored. So these types of errors can occur. Another issue that is a challenge is the scale of measurement. We're creating a scale so I may test you on your ability in statistics or how much uh, happiness one may have. And simply because you do not respond positively or even receive a score of zero on a mastery test in statistics or an attitude test in happiness doesn't mean you're void of that. So the units sometimes attribute meaning so we need to consider the scale of measurement. And then finally the relationships between our constructs are important. So Lord Novick uh, discuss the importance of the constructs and how they relate to each other so that we have multiple theories and multiple ideas engaging each other. So these relationships, we can define them mathematically and maybe as you advance through both this course and into future courses, you'll begin to see how we can actually build some of these mathematical relationships. In this course, we'll talk about the beginnings of factor analysis, sort of a very brief intro and in how it's used in measurement. And we'll talk a brief intro into item response theory. But there's two courses that extend beyond this one. Uh, and for those listening, there's, there's information to be gathered, both in structural equation modeling or factor analysis, and in item response theory, and potentially into diagnostic modeling. Um, and to actually create these models that can help us understand the observable phenomena. So along with these problems in measurement, we have some understanding that we're going to come to in test theory about how we can overcome some of these problems. So in test theory, we want to be able to estimate some of the influence of these problems on our measurement, on those tools that we use to test. And we're going to devise some methods to minimize or overcome some of these problems. In this class, we're going to distinguish between test theory and applied testing. So specifically in test theory, uh, some of the underlying principles that are logical models or mathematical models will be discussed. Again, I'll, I'll be referring to some issues about scaling, testing in the classical test theory perspective. We will begin an introduction in um, generalizability theory, uh, item response theory, and factor analysis. Those models and mathematical procedures that we can use to sort of explain uh, how we can minimize and overcome problems.
in measurement. We're going to be building using tests. Our, we're going to have a framework for an instrument development. Some of this you may have been introduced to in a previous course, with item development. We're going to talk about some of the frameworks and elements of reliability and validity and test construction throughout this course. Also, we have elements of both test use and construction that are going to come up later both in the chapters in the reading and also the standards of educational and psychological testing, uh, which you will be reviewing this semester. A brief historical review of where test theory comes from obviously doesn't start with someone saying, here's test theory and we're going to have our own field. Uh, most of it is origins are in psychological uh, uh, constructs and the scientific disciplines. So we might think of some of the Germans in the 1800s, like Wundt and Leibniz, um, that were considering the control of experimentation um, and make it more of a legitimate science. Um, in Great Britain, we have uh, maybe Sir Francis Galton, uh, working toward issues related to testing. We interact with some of those folks from France. So we have the Continentals, uh, philosophers and scientists uh, considering intelligence testing. And really a lot of this builds to the practice that we remove item analysis from the ivory tower. It's no longer just a theoretical element. We now have to empirically test items and consider whether or not they are good or of quality. In the United States, uh, Cattell might be worth mentioning, and uh, large samples for normative testing. Uh, we consider uh, Thorndike and systematic measurement. We get into standardized tests during the war periods in the US and, and industrial periods. Of note, we might also mention Thurstone. Uh, when it comes to scaling, and we'll take a look at some of those two scales in, in later discussion. I also have here some of the journals. I, will, I just mentioned two here, but there's tons we could mention. Psychometrica, EPM is Educational Psychological Measurement. Uh, you may have mentioned Applied Psychological Measurement. There's, there's many uh, journals in the field, but these play into the history, and, and uh, as journals and texts often do, um, these were important, these two in particular, were, were important as they sort of began to consolidate the psychometric community together. For those that have had me for another course or heard me on another discussion of especially an introduction to a research methods or statistics course, the stages of inquiry in test theory don't really change from our stages of inquiry in other forms of research. We come up with ideas and we begin to formulate questions. So we might follow our little smiley face and happiness concept and uh, begin to say, well, what are the ideas or behaviors I've observed? And what hypotheses do I want to make? For example, does smiling indicate some form of happiness? As we go on, we begin to operationally define uh, variables that are related to our hypothesis to build a stronger way of uh, measuring. We need to determine instruments. We need to basically go from our question to a definition, uh, strengthening our hypotheses with, measure, with precise measurement and determine what instrument, how we're going to collect the data. Often though in, in testing theory you may have instruments that already exist or even data that already exists, but sometimes you may have entirely new constructs or ideas of measuring constructs. Next, we need to consider the accuracy and sensitivity of our instruments uh, and what procedures we will use. If you think of designing a good method section, not just who you and uh, who you will uh, work with as participants and uh, the instruments, but how are you actually going to collect the data? Then you need to actually go out and collect the data in an experimental data setting. Uh, so framing around those ideas of, of uh, experimentation are important in order to collect the right data in the right way to support your hypothesis. And finally, 
uh, summarize and analyze uh, your uh, results from that data mathematically. So as a recap and adding just maybe a little bit more context in this course, we measure people objects, things. Often we are going to be talking about measuring people uh, and scaling items and we'll talk about doing that separately and together. But we're measuring or assigning a value to something based on some rule system. You can literally think of the ruler as one measures height in inches or centimeters. Our constructs are underlying constructs such as happiness, might be operationally defined as smile or eyebrow raises. We may find much more detailed ways in instrument development and survey instruments to use, but we develop a construct, a concept, and build a way to measure. Our problems that underlie testing are very common in, in all forms of testing. Uh, we discussed some of those uh, related to uh, no universal approach to measurement, error, uh, and attempting to uh, demonstrate relationships amongst constructs. And finally, we build tests that minimize many of these problems and that can actually measure what we want to measure. So in the next coming videos, uh, we will discuss, and in, in class, we will be discussing issues, uh, I'll probably have a short video for statistical concepts and theory, and mention scaling and constructs coming up, but eventually we're going to be moving more into reliability and validity as the heart, and fairness as the heart of testing and evidence for reliability and evidence for validity you will often hear mentioned, um, which will help us to understand and resolve some of the issues in testing.